In a couple of my earlier videos, I used an airbrush to paint some things, some roses and masks and so on, and I wanted to kind of go over exactly what I'm doing and why I do airbrushing instead of dyes on some items, and also what you need to get kind of set up for airbrushing items. Uh, obviously, the first major thing is an airbrush. Uh, this is a really nice pass uh, double action, but you can use just a, a cheap single action airbrush like this. Um, they're not as versatile is the only real thing. This is like using a can of spray paint and this you can actually adjust the flow of air and paint more precisely and get different lines and such. Mostly I use it like a can of spray paint. I really don't actually use it to its full potential. Uh, but the reasons why I would use it, first and foremost, the largest reason is the colors that are available. If you need to paint something white or pink, um, if you need metallic colors, like uh, we do some purple masks with pearlized paints, those aren't colors that you can easily get um, leather dyes for. Some of them, they don't exist at all, or they don't hold those colors. Um, Blues and greens are bad about that as well. And uh, the other reason why I would use this is like on our masks that we make quite a number of. Um, even painting them black, I will use an airbrush and just black paint on it rather than dye because dyes can bleed off as somebody's wearing it. And nobody wants to wear a mask and then look like a raccoon for a couple days. So I just use black paint. Otherwise, it's all fairly simple. I'll sometimes use actual airbrush colors um, that are basically already thinned down and used the way that uh, set up to just run right straight through the airbrush. But a lot of what I use is just cheap acrylic paints. You can just get them almost anywhere. Um, and then I take those and thin them down. So usually about half and half with water and acrylic paint comes up just about right. Um, now, what's necessary in this besides the airbrush? You should never get an airbrush without getting a way to clean it. Uh, this is a set, they're real cheap, you can get them on Amazon. It's just brushes and picks uh, to be able to clean it out after you use it. And you should take this apart and clean it every time you use it. Uh, otherwise paint dries up in it and it doesn't work the next time. And the other big piece of equipment that I have here that may not be as obvious is that I've actually got this table I built for, which is a spray booth. On the back, I have a paper, uh, it's just a furnace air filter, a pleated furnace fil air filter. And there's some ductwork behind that and a fan. The fan in this case is another one of these, uh, which is a blower that I rescued from, uh, it was an inflatable yard decoration for Halloween that was being thrown away. And it had two of these little squirrel cage type blowers in it. And I used one of those on there and this is the other extra that I'll probably use for something else. And I can turn that on with a switch down here. And it draws air in through that filter. The reasoning for that is when you use an airbrush, you're gonna wind up with this mist of paint that comes out. You can see it kind of scattered all over here in the spray booth. But you don't want that to get all over the whole room, and you definitely don't want to be breathing it in. Now you can wear a respirator to prevent the breathing it in part, but you can also just use a spray booth. And so if you don't want to wake up the next morning after using your airbrush and sneeze the rainbow, it helps to have either a respirator or a spray booth and the spray booths can be a lot easier to build even than what I have here and all this is like I said a blower some ductwork and a wooden box and a furnace filter that I change every now and then so while we're on the subject of equipment I just mentioned that it'd be a lot easier there's other ways you can make a spray booth and I will slap together something real quick that is ugly but effective so if you don't have the tools or the skills or time or whatever to build a nice wooden box with the wired in electricity for, and the lights and fans and all of that, this is an alternative. And this is as easy as it looks. Basically, I have a cardboard box. 
I cut a hole in the bottom of the cardboard box, just a little bit smaller than this uh, paper furnace filter that I have in there, and I use some thumbtacks just to tack that to the back of the box. And then I have back here a box fan, just a regular, you can buy them pretty much everywhere, fan, and it is pointing back towards the wall, so it blows the air out that way. And the box is snugged up nice and tight against it. This could probably be improved with a little bit of duct tape. But really the only tool this took was I needed a knife to cut the hole in the box and cut the flaps off the top. That's it. That's all I did. Stuck it together. And it does work rather well. So one test for if you're looking for drafts in a space is to grab a, a tissue or a piece of toilet paper and see if it moves. As you can see, it just kind of hangs there and still there. But if you turn this on, even out here, the air is drawing it in. And the further you get in, the more force you have. So the air is going through the filter, and it will filter the paint out. As we go. So we won't wind up with paint on our wall spraying that way. We won't wind up with paint all over the room and we won't wind up breathing paint in. Okay, now we're going to move over to my old spray booth. Now that we know that that one works. Uh, I definitely know this one works. And I'm going to change over and do some of the masks in black. Um, and to change over colors, all I really do is I went to the sink and I rinsed out my uh, paint cup uh, or I'll change over to a different bottle or whatever uh, depending on how I'm using this and then I need to clean it out of the brush and for that I just keep a jar that I spray into and a little bottle of water and I'll just fill the spray cup with some water and run it through And that'll rinse out enough of the paint that it usually pretty quickly will be the color that I want it to be. I also a lot of times will work from light colors to dark, like I did the white rose first, and then I'm going to do the black masks. Because if I still got some white in there, it doesn't really much matter. I'll just be covering it with black. And the same thing applies to anything where you're spraying paint, uh, whether it's a can of spray paint or a sprayer like this or an HVLP sprayer. You want to have your hand moving before you turn the paint on. So a double action brush like this, you can turn the air on by pushing down on it and it just blows air. But it's not until you pull back that you open it up to paint. And so I'm actually, I could keep the air on and just be turning the paint on and off as I decide to move back and forth. But I usually let off the button entirely. So I'm not blowing air to no advantage.
of the other main advantages of an airbrush is that it aerosols the paint in the air and so it dries very rapidly once it's on there. This has only been painted for a minute or so and it's already dry to the touch. Um, and it'll be finished in almost no time flat. It'll be completely dry.